Um, I really appreciate Coach Mike. Great, great guy. Great program. And of course, it's been kind of. I think this is the third year in a row we played him in an exhibition game. And um, you know, and so I, I thought our guys, um, for the most part, uh, early on, um, we 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 you know I like the effort and intensity that we played with, particularly on the defensive end. But. Um, as young people do sometimes, they, they play to the score. And I thought, you know, that we, uh, as the game went on, uh, you know, our, our defensive intensity waned a little bit. Of course, it's always great to, to get all the guys in and get an opportunity to play. And uh, I'm not referring to them. I'm, I'm actually referring to our main line guys. Um, uh, hated Victor Waco turned his ankle. It doesn't sound like it's anything serious. Of course, we're fighting some injuries right now. So, um, but I thought he showed, you know, uh, first class, big time athlete, and uh, was doing some good things out there. And unfortunately, I thought he was just getting in his groove a little bit. But uh, anyway, I thought the uh, overall there were some good things. But it's also when you play a, your first game, it uh, it gives you really can it focuses on the things that you need to work on. And we've got a lot of things to work on to get better if we're going to be able to be competitive with Mississippi State on Sunday, and then of course. Um, a really tough non-conference schedule and a, and, a, and a really good league this year. Questions? Jay, can you talk about Victor Hart and his emergence? Um, you know, gosh, at everybody, that's the first thing John Cox said down on the radio. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not that surprised. And I think that he can get a lot better. Um, and I, I mean, he, he got 20 and, and, and so forth, but uh, I saw of those type of flashes last year. In fact, it, in our, and you can ask Victor in our spring meeting, I, I told him, I said, I think that you've got a chance to be an all league player. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. And, and I said, but I think I see that for you. I'm not sure you do, you know? And so that was our way of challenging him. And, uh, and I, I think anybody that's heard me talk in the off season, I've talked about he and I talked about, Mo Arnold and Donovan Ivory, I thought all three of those players really took a step forward uh, in the off season. And, uh, but Vic, I think, of course, Vic had a good night tonight, uh, 20 and nine. I think that he can do a lot better. I really do. He, is, he's, he, he was our most athletic big last year and would show signs of, 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 of really doing good things, but he searched for some consistency. But anyway, that's a good start for him, and we're gonna need every bit of that as we move forward. But uh, I really liked uh, particularly those first eight or nine guys, the athleticism that, that was out there. We were quick, we were athletic, had some length. And uh, so I, I think that gives us a chance to, to really have a good defensive team. And Juan keeps talking to him, he wants our team defensively not to just to be number one in the league he wants us to be number one in the country defensively and um, we've got a ways to go to do that and of course offense on the other side I, I think our you know our offensive execution needs a lot of work um, especially against you know higher level opponents so anyway uh, but but Victor Hart's going to play a big role for us real, real real pleased with his game tonight but not surprised um, stat that we're going to probably it's going to have to handle the ball a little more this year yeah. Obviously, uh, six assists, no turnovers. Yeah. Well, he's a he's he's a veteran. Um, you know, he played the point at Ole Miss. You know, before he came here, so he's probably going to have to play some of that role for us tonight. Of course, I tried to, I worked a few other guys in there. Um, of course, Jeff Armstrong played a little bit of it tonight. Thought Mo was solid. You know, just solid as a rock, tough defender, plays his tail off, always has. Um, Mo 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 was Mo Mo was good tonight. Did what he did did what he does, I should say. And, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think as we move forward, of course, waiting to see, uh, we got the news on, on, on of course, on Neff. And it um, looks like he's gonna be out, you know, 10 weeks or so, maybe nine more now. Um, and then we haven't heard from NCAA on Andre Corbello. And I'm just hoping and praying that, that, that he comes through. That would be a, a huge shot in the arm for us if so. So we'll, we hope to hear when the next, hopefully before the season starts on him. Um, but if not, we'll, I, I feel good about where we are, especially with Austin being able to handle that, uh, a backup role there. So Alvarez, is, is he up for the season or, or is that still No, uh, that's to be determined. Okay. Um, he's, um, and it's a different injury, just so you guys will be clear. It's not the, his, his injury that he had last year of course this is the third year he had he had it started at mercer he had he, he missed most of his 
last season that he was at Mercer University, and then he came here. Of course, he got hurt um, early in the season, missed 19 games, came back, played really well, got hurt right before the conference tournament. But and, and they went in and, and uh, replaced a screw, and, and of course when he and it was if, if y'all it was the most benign thing, you know, it wasn't like he had a big collision or slip or anything. It was just a frankly just almost just shuffling his feet, and uh, I guess came down on the side of his foot. Our, of course, our first thought was it was um, it was his same injury, but the, they they went and did a. CAT scan of it is not, it's a separate, it's a different injury. So anyway, they, they think they went ahead and, and immediately had surgery and they think that he'll be ready in about 10 weeks. But uh, that's why the Cabello situation has a big bearing. So, because if he could get back, you know, then, then of course we, we could just maybe talk about holding uh, Neff, of course, to next year and have him, have him back on a medical red show. So what is the technical term for this current injury? Then? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I don't really know what it is. It's not a. It's not a Jones fracture. I, I don't guess. But Jack, do you have any information on that? Mm -hmm. I don't. But Andrew, we can. I'll get it for. I'll get the medical term for you. So is it? It's a foot. foot. Okay. It's his foot, and it's the same foot. That's why we thought it was. It was maybe the the same injury. But the the, thing, the good part of it, the where he had surgery, all that is really really strong. That wasn't it. It's it's actually more to on the side. So, outside of his foot. Kind of a stress fracture is way the way it was told to me, but it's not a Jones fracture. What does his loss just mean to the team? Oh, it's it's uh, you know he he brings he's such a valuable person uh, on and off the floor. He's a great leader, but he's tough. He's of course changes the game while he's in there, and uh, so it's it's a it's a tough deal for us to lose him. And, uh, you know, of course, I want what's best for him. He's got a great professional career ahead of him, so we've got to try to get him healthy, do everything that we can to get him healthy. So um, it, it hurts, and, um, and, and especially with, with Andre Cabello's situation kind of up in the air until we hear something from the NCAA. So, um, you know, anytime you lose a player of that caliber, it's tough. But, you know, it happened last year, and we were able to kind of hang things together until he got back. So that's going to be the goal this year. So you said it could be 10 weeks, it could be out for the year, you, you're not sure. When do you think you'll know? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess as he continues on, Andrew, best I can answer that. Uh, of course, I'm not medical, probably should have had Todd or Chris or one of those guys in here to answer those questions. And and maybe if we can get get them on there to discuss it, a little more technical than I can. But he, uh, from what I understand, he could be back as, as early as 10 weeks. Um, had the surgery Monday, and um, but I think it just depends on how it all heals, Andrew. I really do. Uh, like I said, I, I'm just I hate to get into something I don't really know what I'm talking about. Is the NCAA waiver for Curbelo is that something that can it, that has to be accepted or denied before the actual season starts, or could it be in the middle of the season? Um, hey, Damon, yes, that's a good question. You know, uh, the NCAA just they they kind of on their own timeline. Mm -hmm. I, I was told earlier today that we may hear, we, we hope to hear something within 10 business days, but there's nothing that says they have to do that. Um, and I think that he's, they're asking questions of our compliance people. That's a good thing, you know, that it hasn't just been categorically denied from the little bit that we know. Um, and I don't in any way like to, just like on the medical issue to try to jump into something that so technical, I don't really know what I'm talking about because when it comes to that compliance stuff, but he 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 seems to to check a lot of boxes of what they said are the prerequisites for for having a strong consideration. I'll say that. Kind of speak a little bit to Awaku before he got hurt. Gosh, man, this looks like he's going to be a really dynamic guy in the paint. Yeah, uh, if there, you know, he's athletic. He's fast. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, a great defender. Uh, I tell you, I, I, you could ask Felipe Hase last year. Of course, we, he was at UNLV, and they put him on Felipe, and he just gave Felipe, I don't know if y'all remember, he just gave Felipe fits. I don't know if Felipe scored. I can't remember that far back, but it was, I know he didn't, if he scored, he only had two, and, and he really struggled when we played them. And uh, so we had it, when he hit the transfer portal, that was a player that we were very familiar with. and. We, we thought that we we needed a player like him. And I thought he was just getting in his groove out there. 
uh, tonight when he when he turned his ankle. But thank goodness, according to Chris Clapton, our our trainer here, uh, he's it, it's a it's a, a standard sprained ankle. So hopefully hopefully he'll be back ready for Sunday. And I think you guys were down four guys coming into the night before. Victor got hurt. Could you just give us a quick rundown of, of what the injuries? Yeah. Of well, of course, of course, you've got um, uh, Libya. He 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 came in with a, a a a knee injury from junior college. We of course were told that it wasn't an ACL tear, but just the way he practiced here. Of course, I'll say, I'll, I I want to say this: we have great medical care here, not just on campus, we have great medical care on campus, but we also have great medical care here in Hattiesburg community. Southern Bone and Joint is a medical provider for us. They do a great job. And we have access, the athletes have access to really high level, you know, guys that have a lot of athletic background. So um, anyway, we, we immediately got him checked out. Uh, when, when they did, they said he, he had an ACL tear. Um, we were kind of projecting him to play behind Tegra in, anyway. So we, of course, Victor Waco, and uh, it, the good thing with him is is he's gotten it fixed, and of course he's out for the year, but he'll have three more years left. So that actually could work well for us in the future. Plus he'll he'll get healthy. Um, of course, we've just discussed Neft Alvarez. Uh, unfortunately, his situation. Um, uh, let's see who I'm missing here. Luke Ladner, my son. He, he's uh, he's actually had a bulging disc. Uh, he's been out for about two and a half months. Just got a shot. <laughs> Uh, he, he is supposed to begin uh, activity next week, um, so hopefully it'll be good to get back. Let's see, Jack, who am I missing here? Cabello. Uh, uh, well, Andre Cabello is not an injury. Well, he, he did have a concussion, um, but he's, he's in the concussion protocol. He's got two more days. He should be clear to practice by Thursday, so he's, he's going to be fine. Our, our deal with Andre, of course, is the uh, NCAA waiver. Am I missing somebody else? Those four guys. And of course, Victor now, but Vic, I don't think Victor's going to be out long. Anything else? Right. Questions? Victor, when did you uh, did you know that you were going to be starting all through this off season? I mean, it seems like you made a, a really big jump compared to last year. Uh, honestly, I had to work for it. Man, it was not handed to me. You know, I was put in the right position, you know, to get where I'm at. So, pretty much just to work, you know, stacking days. What, what's been the biggest difference for you? Um, me just mm, learning from everybody, you know, guys like AC, guys who have left the program, DeAndre Payton, Felipe, you know. I was able to soak in a lot of knowledge, you know, IQ, style of play from those guys, so I just put it all together. And he was plus 35. Highs on the team, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Victor, could you talk a little bit about what they asked you to add to your game? For, for this season, it looks like you're, you're doing a little more work in the paint. Uh, uh, coach has always told me about my abilities, you know, inside, outside. So um, mainly just been trying, you know, knowing when to step out, when to be inside, putting it all together. So. Do you see yourself kind of maybe filling a similar role to what DeAndre kind of did last year? No, definitely. You know, he was, you know, he was skilled, but he also did a lot of dirty work, you know, and that took us a long way, so. I'm a kind of different player, but we still need that in this team, you know, in order to be successful. Austin, what have you liked from Victor this off season? What, how, how have you seen him grow? Um, like I told you guys before the season, man, I just seen a lot of mature, uh, just high IQ. You know, he's he picked up a lot of stuff that Dre learned from last year, and he's just been uh, consistent every single day. I think that's the thing that uh, puts him in the place that he is right now. He's just been consistent each and every day. We know exactly what we get from Victor Hart every single day, so. Man, just to see him grow and to see him be who he is right now, it's just, uh, it's great to see, man, because he's a brother to me. And just, just to see him do so, so good right now, it's, it's great. Austin, uh, what are just your overall thoughts on, on the night? Are there maybe things you can take away from tonight? Um, I think I think we played well at times. I feel like we got lackadaisical in uh, certain situations um, when we were up. But um, it's a, it's building blocks, you know. It's first game. You know, we're just trying to get the, uh, the kinks out of – of our offense and our defense, but um, I think overall, I think um, we have we have a really good team and really a lot of good places, a lot of good pieces to the puzzle that um, are going to help us in the long run. You know, just having size down low with Vic, uh, Tegra, uh, Vi, just a lot of pieces to the puzzle. You know, and it's, it's sometimes it's hard to see all the pieces, but 
now that you know we're getting into the uh, groove of playing basketball and playing against someone else, now you can see the pieces more than you can see them in practice. All right. Looks like you guys maybe have added some guys that can shoot off the perimeter. You also those, those guys with those bodies are also guys that can take it to the hole too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, Vic been a knockdown shooter in practice. Kobe, uh, Tate, uh, a lot of those guys. Donovan, man, it just um, sitting in practice. You know, if you practice versus someone every single day, you know, sometimes you become numb to it. But you know, just to see us play against somebody else, you know, you probably get to see them versus someone else. It's just um, it's another level for these guys, and I think they stepped up to the plate today and they played well. Anything else? Not to dampen the mood, but uh, you know, we all saw the post with, with Nefta and his surgery. Mm -hmm. When did you guys learn that news? What's just kind of your thoughts moving forward without him? Um, uh, we pretty much learned the news uh, maybe like a day before you guys, just him getting in surgery. But man, that's his, that's his, um, that was his choice, you know. I feel like it was the best choice for him. You know, he hasn't had a full season in like last two, three seasons. For him, he's been playing half of the season. Um, half here, couple games there. So just for him to, you know, just take time away, get his mind right, and have have him for next year, have him for a full season. I think that's the best thing for him right now. And uh, I'm glad he made the decision. You know, I wish he was, I was out there with him because he's such a great competitor, someone you want on your side. But just to have, just to, for him to be happy, that's what I want him to be. So as long as he's happy, we're good. Anyone else? All right, thanks, guys. Bye.